I have not been to Minnesota in probably 20 years. Bring gas. Welcome to Flagrant Howls, a Minnesota Timberwolves lifestyle podcast. Uh, the final Woj bomb was sent out on Twitter a few days ago, Kyle, a, uh, a random sort of a rotational forward for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Little did we know when Adrian Wojnarowski pressed send on that tweet that he had then reached his wits end as an NBA insider so much that he'd rather go basically run the <laughs> NIL program for uh, St. Bonaventure University men's basketball. So... Uh, that and a million other things to get to today on Flagrant Howls, your favorite Timberwolves lifestyle podcast. Hello, Kyle. I have a DM from Woj on November 3rd, 2010. I don't have what I said. 2010, 14 years ago, I was probably being a big loser and probably just tweeting at him. And he sent me, that's true. I was hoping for an end of famine, world peace, and good finale to Entourage. <laughs> 0 for 3, you're on to me, brother. Wow, he still dude. was the best then, he's the best now. And yeah, that was, you know, it felt, I think you retweeted a Shawn Michaels clip. Uh, it actually hurt yesterday to click the little bell on his account and be like, I don't need these notifications anymore. Did so you I'm, unfollow him? No, I, I'm still tapped into what St. Bonaventures is going to do. Uh, I'm really, I'm really classes. excited for those updates, yeah. But uh, 6.5 million followers are just going to be getting St. Bonaventure basketball updates now. It's great. It, I mean, honestly, though, all jokes aside for a second, it is cool that anytime you can go out on your own terms, I think is really cool. I, it seems like reading stories that it was a shocker. Uh, but it does leave, I mean, you're seeing, I, we talked about it a little bit on this podcast, like you're seeing guys like KOC go from the ringer to Yahoo. Jake Fisher's leaving Yahoo. Like there's just a lot of movement right now in an industry that's still very important because the NFL is king, but the NBA is kind of all about bombs and tweets and breaking news and scoops. And uh, yeah, I don't know who's going to step up and do it, but it sure as hell won't be me. Or is Jake? No. In fact, this is the last ever episode of flagrant house. (laughs) Kyle and I, we are both retiring producer Ross, or we're going to go run, uh, I don't know, like an AAU team in St. Paul. That's our plan. I have actually agreed to work for Chelsea. I'm moving over. Oh, you're going with such and Gupta. Okay. Which is another thing that came out. Yeah, so eight, so Sasha and Gupta, and he's the trade machine guy, right? I mean, yep. that's how he, yep. he created the trade machine that ESPN. And so 18 years in the NBA as a front office guy working his way up and, and was even the interim general manager for the Timberwolves sort of between stints. And his, so according to Doogie, his contract was set to expire here in the next year, and, and he was no longer one of the top two guys in that front office. And so he he could either, I think the options were move on to maybe another NBA organization at some point or do what he's doing, which is after 18 years in the NBA, taking his family and moving across the pond to work for Chelsea, right? In yeah. the EPL. And wow. So I think, I think fans probably hear that name and then think of the trade machine or think of when he stepped in when Gerson Rosas was let go. Um, and then kind of out of sight, out of mind, since Tim Conley came into the picture. Sashin was still very much involved, and in, like we saw him in Phoenix for the series and stuff. But uh, just one of the three nicest people I've ever met. Awesome Probably guy. too nice to be working in that. Again, being an executive would be awesome, but it's, you know, you kind of got to be a snake oil salesman sometimes. And he's just a really good dude. I know his wife, I think, is maybe a doctor. So sounds like they're relocating again overseas. But, uh, I mean, I'm not a big, I don't have a soccer team, but I might follow along for Chelsea a little bit just to see what he does. So interesting move there. Um, as we just keep ripping him off, I mean, I don't know if you heard this in the last couple of weeks, but uh, I think Glenn Taylor subpoenaed the league. Uh, that was an interesting little nugget that came out recently um, about the ownership stuff. And uh, our favorite uh, Minnesota politician, Mike Conley, had his house broken into. So we're really getting ready for basketball season. There's yeah, a lot of Timberwolves like- meat on the bone. It's uh man, we even we got an email from a listener and I'll just paraphrase it. A listener sent and it's uh, it's I'm not trying to rip the listener here, but it was a well-intentioned email outlining all the different things that he's seen on Instagram and the videos of all the wolves working out and Anthony Edwards putting stuff out and Mike Conley and everyone's grinding Nas Reed step back threes. And uh, he's concerned that Carl Anthony Towns looks like he's just on a world vacation tour and isn't working. <laughs> and I would say, listen, as as Cat's number one critic, I would say, I think he's probably finding some time to work on his basketball game. Maybe he's just not putting it out on social media in the same way. But 
That would be a big breaking story if they showed up to camp and Cat was like 25 pounds heavier and had not picked up a basketball all summer. I guess we'll just have to wait till they report here uh, in like, what, a week? When's media day? Media like day a, is September 30th. It's a yeah. Monday, but we are actually, we're doing this on a Thursday as we always do, but we are two weeks away tomorrow, two weeks away from the first preseason Timberwolves game, which again is bananas, right? Because it's like the Vikings might be the best team in the NFL and the Lynx are trying to win another title and the Twins are playing baseball, I think. And uh, the New Orleans slant, uh, the New Orleans Saints slander in that last comment was palpable. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be a really fun time. And then, you know, I don't know if you saw this, too, as we clear out our brains, but like new city edition jerseys leaked. And they I don't know are, if I'm, uh, yeah, I'm kind of they're kinda terrible on those. Yeah. They're terrible. Uh, if you're wondering why they're terrible, I would uh, point you to Yahoo Finance dot com and maybe the Nike stock price, which continues to plummet. Uh, they get. They are, I can see HQ out my window. They are uh, going through some stuff right now, and it is affecting their products. But, yeah, all of the jerseys are terrible. Um, we also probably need to stop making jerseys every year. Like, there's not a lot of That's creativity. a lot, yeah. So that's like 30 new creative concepts uh-huh. every single year. You know, like over a 10-year span, are we? Or what's the math on that? 30 times 10 would be 300. Are we really yep. coming up with like 300 bangers over and, the course of a decade? And in, in Nike's defense, like some of the teams, not I don't want to say this for the Wolves, but some teams have a lot more creative input than others. But like some of these bad designs are not necessarily, you know, my neighbor at Nike. So, uh, yeah, just, a, <laughs> just kind of ramping up. It was, it was nice to have a summer off. I, I speak for Carl. It was nice to just have a, a summer off and travel great, yeah. and do some stuff. Just but uh, don't don't think about your profession at all whatsoever. I'm yeah. ready to ready to get back in the gym, uh, in the podcast <laughs> studio, and start talking about uh, the 24-25 Wolves. So let's let's do this, and, and we will get to uh, a random Wolf of the Week. But I'm going to give you something I saw on the internet, and then let's go back and forth on a question that I have here for for the show. So... ESPN bet was the latest platform to put out their season championship odds. So Hmm. I'll just go through this. You tell me how disrespected you feel, and then I'll throw out my next question. So Celtics at a plus 325 are the odds on favorite to repeat. And then Oklahoma City, second most likely champion, followed by the 76ers. Denver Nuggets and New York Knicks both tied for fourth at plus 800. Then you get the Mavericks at sixth, plus a thousand, and now we get to the Timberwolves, seventh most likely team to win the championship, plus eleven hundred, just ahead of Bucks, Lakers. That seems high to me. Uh, Suns, Warriors, Clippers, and Heat. So, d- do you think this is accurate, or do you feel disrespected on behalf of the Timberwolves that there are six teams above them in the championship odds from ESPN? Uh, disrespected in the sense of, you know, and you know this too from all the sports you've covered in football is kind of the biggest one, but those lines are kind of set sometimes to kind of move the action around. So like the Lakers who have no chance at winning an NBA title are always going to have good title odds just because every summer a a new Lakers fan is tired of watching the Yankees and is like, let me, let me bet on the Lakers to win a title. So do the Wolves have a worse chance than the Nuggets. I struggle with that. I know you and I have our history with the Denver Nuggets, but you know, I don't, I think they had maybe one of the worst off seasons in the West, just what they lost and what they're kind of banking on. Uh, But 11 to one isn't great, especially when you probably just factor in a Timberwolves tax of something. I mean, again, as good as it all gets, like, let's see what happens with the ownership thing. Let's see what happens if expectations aren't met early on. But uh, 11 to one is, they're not going to win a lot of awards because they did clean up last year, right? Like outside of coach of the year, the Wolves basically won every award, six man of the year, uh, defensive player of the year. So I don't see them winning a lot of awards. I don't see Ant winning MVP unless things go really, really well. But 11 to one's pretty good odds if you're finally like, hey, let me throw something out there and see what sticks. But uh, that's just crazy to think, right? Like we did this pod two years ago. The Wolves odds to win the title that year after they go bear trade was like, what? 60 to one yeah i was gonna say 50 to one so uh, yeah it is it is respect but it's also disrespectful at the same time because okc had such a good off season i think with caruso and hartenstein um and just another year of i mean they have a really good coach too so they're probably the favorites in the west but to me it's like dallas and minnesota in their own tier two and then maybe the denvers of the world in tier three 
the Sixers are the team that like, ever. And some of this is just like, like you said, it's hype. It's 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 what what are you looking for when you set these odds, like action wise? And I know they added Paul George, but how many times do we need to see a Joel Embiid led team with with different sidekicks? By the way, that he's had, and I mean he's had everyone from. Jimmy Butler to James Harden to Tyrese Maxey. Now you at least have sort of a three-headed monster. Um, but they've they've not even been, I don't think, in the NBA era to the Eastern Conference Finals, let alone the NBA Finals, let alone winning the NBA Finals. So that's a team I'd probably fade third mm-hmm. there. I'm fine with this. I think I don't think the Wolves as the hunted is a great position for the franchise to be in. So the fact that they can go to the Western Conference Finals and have Anthony Edwards be one of the star breakout players on the Olympic gold medal team. And they still kind of come in with some skepticism and the market saying that they're not one of the six most likely championship teams. I think that's a good thing for them. If they yeah. come in and all of a sudden, like from from day one, uh, you know, it's, it's the Celtics and the Timberwolves are the two most likely teams. I don't know that that's a great weight to put on Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards. I think I think part of what's made the last couple of years uh, so fun for fans too is like it's a little bit of unexpected success. I don't know that people thought they were going to get to the Western Conference Finals. So so that leads me to my my next question and maybe we can just go back and forth on this. If the Wolves are going to be better. So let's say they're going to go either Western Conference Finals to Finals or let's say they're going to add a bunch of wins to the regular season total and be the one seed, whatever that looks like. What are the ways in which that happens? Like, what are the main things that would happen for the Wolves to take another jump forward? I mean, pretty simple. I think it just all revolves around their offense. And I think it leads into playing a little faster. And when you play faster, you oftentimes increase like the chaos that you bring to the floor. I mean, by playing faster, I'm kind of emphasizing playing the younger guys more. Um, One of my things this season would be to monitor how many games Mike Conley plays, because I think 76, while impressive last year, was kind of a mistake. You need Mike Conley to play 30, 34 minutes a game in April and May, not in December and January. Uh, But yeah, just like trying to get out and transition more. Obviously, there's a lot kind of ties together here. If you get stops, you get in transition. How do you get stops? You get the defensive player of the year at the rim. So, but I would just like to see them kind of turn down the minutes of a Rudy or a Mike Conley and just, and it's going to be ugly some nights and it's going to be, we're going to rip them sometimes when, you know, Rob Dillingham's maybe one for nine or Terrence Shen Jr. has four turnovers, but just try to increase that offense. I think Krasinski had it in one of his articles lately. They were 17th last year. If that number can get to 10, right or in the single digits top 10 i'd be okay if the defense goes from first to eighth right because you know yes. they're going to bring the defense come playoff time it is a calling card these guys have done it long enough now that it is an identity of not just you know rudy but Jaden and, and, and ant and some of these other guys so more offense more nas reed more carl threes Ant, you just know is going to take that olympic leap but yeah my my answer to that is just more scoring if if that's as dumb as it sounds yeah in fact i just want to i want to find this i have it buried deep in my notes but it's not often that a team repeats number one defensive net rating so right <laughs> it's uh well i mean i guess it did happen so the bucks the bucks did repeat two let's see here uh 2000 yeah this is number one number one net uh net rating defense the Bucks repeated it in 2019 into 20. The Spurs repeated it a couple times, once in the early 2000s, actually three consecutive years in the early 2000s, and then 16, 17, like right at the end of the Kawhi run there, they had the best defense back-to-back years, and the Pacers snuck one in, those Pacers teams that were kind of pesky against the Heat. So even, the hell, the Nets did it too, so I guess I stand corrected. It is very possible to go back-to-back number one net uh, rating defense, but... I'm kind of with you. They're probably going to take a step back just for like Gobert a year older. Uh, you are you are swapping out Kyle Anderson's defensive minutes maybe for some players that aren't quite. I mean, if Joe Ingles gets some of those minutes or even Terrence Shannon Jr., I, you're just you're probably taking a step back defensively. I would say you brought up Anthony Edwards. If Anthony Edwards gives you something closer to playoff Ant 
for 82 games, you're going to take a step forward because yeah. it is or or like Olympic ant before the semifinals when Steph Curry and LeBron just decided that, OK, we'll take it from here. But in, in the playoffs, it's incredible how much more efficient Anthony Edwards has been in his career. We have three seasons of sample size, 27 playoff games. And so I'm going to compare those 27 games to his regular season career. 28 points a game in the playoffs versus 23 points a game in the regular season. His effective field goal percentage is 55% EFG in the playoffs versus 51% in the regular season. Three-point shooting in the playoffs, just under 40%. Regular season, 35%. I mean, I could play this game with like 10 different st statistical categories. Pull-up jumpers. He goes from being an inefficient pull-up jump shooter in the regular season to being prime Kevin Durant pull-up jump shooter in the postseason. So it, is there a way for him to tap into that version of his game for the majority of 82 games in the regular season? Or is it something that like he can only go to that dark place for a certain amount of time? Is it Or w will he be completely gassed by the end of 82 games if he's... Because if, if he puts up playoff Anthony Edwards efficiency and numbers, Kyle... He will be top three MVP voting. Yeah. And and this team will be in the hunt for the number one seed in the Western Conference. But like the difference between he's a really, really good regular season player. He is one of the three to five best players in the league as a postseason player. So can he close that gap? Can we kind of parse you said something that I've kind of said before and people get upset about this idea of taking a step back that just is brings a negative connotation. That is not what I'm saying, and I know it's not what you're saying, but we actually have proof of it to a team we referenced earlier in the Denver Nuggets. They have literally said publicly now, their coach, their front office, their players, that they grinded too hard after their title defense and tried to win too many regular season games. The Wolves are not defending any title, but in their minds, it's the best season they probably ever had. And it wore them down to the point where they kind of just physically fell apart in that second round against the Wolves. So when we say take a step back, maybe re rebranded as have the Minnesota Timberwolves now graduated to a level where regular season wins don't matter as much, right? Like they didn't have the home court advantage in that Nuggets series and it didn't matter. It would be nice because Target Center is a hellacious place to play for, for opponents. But, and then kind of circling back to Ant, I want Mike and Rudy to maybe dial it down a little bit so that they're fresh come springtime. But with a guy like Ant, I don't know, man. Like he just keeps getting better and better. Not this only is the, just, this is the time for him to play like thirty seven minutes. Like this yeah. is you you know. And he they the Wolves have been putting out a lot of workout videos, but uh, there was that one clip where it's like him and Jaden and Nas in the gym, and Ant says, "If we can all play above our years, literally like our age, the league's in trouble." And that's classic Ant, but it's also just classic truth. Like if they play a 24 year old, a 23 year old and a 22 year old or whatever. Like if they all play like they're in their mid or like late twenties, early thirties, they're going to be a problem for the league. So I would lean more into the kind of core four, as I call them, Nas, Jaden, Ant, and then Rob uh, being thrown to the fire and just try to give those guys that you're still going to win games in the second round, maybe the, the Western conference finals by running Mike out there as much as possible and Rudy out there as much as possible. But yeah, I think your bigger point on Ant and all the numbers it's crazy to just see them always go up. Uh, like, is there a ceiling to that? I don't know. But if if not, then yeah, why can't he be? And the MVP stuff too is getting old, right? People don't want to vote for Embiid anymore. People probably won't vote for Jokic. Those guys will probably dial it back. So if you had to think of a couple other guys that are like MVP favorites, I'm kind of correcting myself on the fly. Who would you even pick? Because it's SG, really not going to be a... SGA. SGA, right? yeah, that's, that's probably number one. That's a good point. Yeah, and then... Luka Doncic does not have an MVP, right? No, that's, you know, so we'll he's see probably kind of shape he comes into, yeah. If voters are looking to like sort of in advance put someone on that pedestal, he's probably the one that okay, it's it's his turn now to to win an MVP. Uh you mentioned Jaden McDaniels, I'll throw him out too. I mean, I maybe I'm just I don't know, maybe I'm drinking Jaden McDaniels Kool-Aid here, but mm, delicious. I still think there's like a 17 points per game scorer in there. And if you if you take away the numbers, and he went from, so that last year was his fourth year in the league. In his third year, as a 22-year-old, he scored 12 points a game in 30 minutes. That went down to 10 and a half points a game in 30 minutes because uh, his three-point shoot, it wasn't really like a shot attempt thing. It was his three-point shooting regressed in the second half of the season. 
He also kind of gets lost just like standing in the corner watching ball dominant Anthony Edwards, ball dominant Carl Anthony Towns. But you, if you just take away the box score for a second and you watch him play basketball, he can knock down threes. He can dribble drive. He has a mid-range game. He can he can grab rebounds when he chooses to. Transition. So, I mean, like, his bag offensively is one that could produce more than 10 points a game. So what if he all of a sudden joins the party and becomes, like, a 15 to 18 points per game reliable third option on offense? I'm still holding out that hope for Jaden McDaniels, I guess. Yeah, and those year three numbers... I think people know this, but are a little inflated because that's when Cat missed 52 games. So you take a bunch of usage out of the pie, and now other people have to step up. Um, fourth year of his rookie deal, he makes all defense second team. So like he he's well worth the money. He's going to get a big pay increase too this next season, just like Ant is. Um, but I keep being told this. I've said this before. No player on that team has been in the gym more. Um, while some guys might be vacationing, and I'm sure a lot of new fathers listening to this pod can attest to this, but... Uh, I don't think Jane went anywhere other than Mayo Clinic Square every morning to, to get up shots and, and to get workouts. So I'm excited to see what he can do because, again, he's he might still not. And I'm going to ask Finch this immediately. Like, will you finally try to carve out some more role for him? Or is it always going to be, at least with that starting lineup, the fifth option? And if it's the fifth option, he's just going to have to force his way into a little more usage. But, yeah, to me, it, the biggest one is I was I, I continue because I have no life watching replays of the Sun series and the Nuggets series, not the Mavs series. <laughs> but uh, you kind of forget, you know, in that game seven, Jaden just hits a couple big threes. And, like, when he's on as a fifth option, the offense in and of itself is just so much better because that's a pretty good fifth option when you kind of look around the league at what other teams throw out there in their starting five. And then the, the only other thing on my list of, like, okay, if, if they're going to take a step forward as a team, and you make good points about why it's not – necessary necessarily like it's if you're if you're grinding your entire regular season to get to 58 wins but you're gassed in the postseason I think we would all not take that trade off but like if Rob Dillingham emerges as a viable big time scorer off the bench as a rookie and I don't think I want to put that on him what is he 19 I I just I don't even know, quite frankly, I mean, he's going to get some run early in the rotation. I don't know that he's going to be given a super long leash to like if, if he can't play defense early on or if he's inefficient or undersized. I don't think they're just going to keep running him out there for 20 minutes a night. But there is a world in which he becomes a major offensive presence and something that you lacked a backup to Mike Conley and some scoring punch off the bench when Anthony Edwards isn't feeling it or whatever. Uh, emerges in a 19-year-old kid here. So I don't know if I would bet on him just bursting into the league after what we saw in the summer league, but there is a world in which he does. I did about as much research for this take as I did for our expansion draft. I want to sincerely apologize to those who were offended by the lack of uh, Toronto Raptors respect that we gave. But uh, how many times has a team made the Western Conference Finals and then added a lottery pick that next summer? And to me, you know, Ansley... Nas Reed in general, Rudy's chip on his shoulder, what does Carl do, all that stuff. I mean, it, I am so excited for this upcoming season to watch. I mean, I would be excited if Rob Dillingham was on a classic traditional 22 and 60 Wolves team of like, okay, can this guy be, you know, Gen Z Allen Iverson or something. But uh, you're throwing a lottery pick in who has a really awesome skill set, something mm -hmm. that the Wolves have never really had or not had very often in, in 35 years onto a team that made the Western Conference Finals. Like, that's going to be fascinating. And I'm with you. I I don't, I don't, disagree a little bit that I wonder if they will give him a longer leash than we think because I just remember Tim Conley talking about that. Like, he's going to play. He was the eighth overall pick. Um, but I also know Tim and Finch have the best relationship ever, you know? So he'll defer to Finch if Finch is like, we got to pull him back or kind of put some more training wheels on him. But that's going to be an option off the bench, a bench that's already really good, right? You have the sixth man of the year. Nikhil had a great season. You bring in Joe Ingles. You have a rookie in Terrence Shine Jr. who is ready to play tomorrow. So, yeah, the number one thing I'm excited about for the 24-25 season is just what does Rob Dillingham do? Because he doesn't, he can be a rookie and do rookie stuff, like the mistakes and the turnovers and all that stuff, and still have a really good impact on a team that, again, is a really good team, and you don't usually see that with lottery picks. 
Yeah. So, yeah, let us know, too, by the way, in the YouTube comment section, what are some of the, the other sneaky ways that if this team's going to take a step forward, what are we missing? What are some other things we should be talking about? Uh, before we get to a random wolf here, I want to go back to the Woj talker. Oh, yeah, for sure. This is like, dude, when that news hit a couple days ago, it kind of shook me. It's it's like not in like a sad way. I'm just you don't see guys in media at the top of their game. Oftentimes you see the other way where it's like, oh, man, Skip Bayless is still on TV or uh, you see. I mean, like, dude, Chris Mortensen had cancer and was battling for his life and comes back after all these health scares. You rarely see a guy with that high of a profile in this era of media when you can make millions and millions of dollars and have huge followings on platforms, just decide to peace out. So, man, like, I don't want to overstate the nature of his job because there's a lot of people that grind construction and do, like, actual hard work. But what must he have been feeling? What pressure? What sort of health things? What was he feeling to just say, (laughs) guys... I'm going to give up making millions of dollars, completely leave the industry in my mid fifties and not ride this out for another 15 years and, uh, and go work in NIL for a relatively small college basketball program. I don't know, man. I was, yeah. I thought that was wild the other day. It really has struck you. Like, uh, that man was probably two days ago, like FaceTiming Rich Paul or like figuring out what LeBron's going to do next or what tweet he's going to send. And he's like, you know what? I would rather negotiate car dealerships with 17 year olds yes. in the New Jersey area. Like that's, and it's crazy. <laughs> and again, it's, it's, I don't even know, I'm trying to think of a football comp because basketball right now is still, well, it would be like if, head. I mean, Adam Schefter is the comp, right? Like he's probably in his mid fifties, but I still think in the NFL, there's more tier two kind of Schefters, right? Like even our guy, Palisaro is like, you know, really good at this. I know people are going to bring up shams, but I don't know. I also think too, Woj, kind of transitioned as media has and the internet has to really just tweets and and podcasts and stuff but that man was a hell of a writer and like I kind of cut my teeth getting into whatever I'm in now like writing and he he could still write really well I mean even his goodbye post was really well written about I've covered everyone else's team and now I want to go back to my own uh it's going to be interesting because again football is king and baseball is baseball or whatever but uh basketball a core of it is just the slop and no one handled the slop in a more professional way than Woj. See, that's the thing, dude, you nailed it. If you think about the NBA and you ranked all of the different assets that the NBA has to connect with fans, like, Mm -hmm. okay, there's regular season games. There's the playoffs. There's the NBA finals. There's the draft. And I'm missing some here, but then there's free agency. And for, I would say, NBA offseason player movement might be the most popular asset that they have. Like, the Correct. speculation on where, and, and dude, every, it's not like football, rarely do top quarterbacks ever hit the free agent market. Patrick Mahomes is not hitting the free agent market, ever. Like, I think Drew Brees almost did one time, and then re-signed a couple months before. Kirk Cousins is probably the biggest in his prime quarterback to hit free agency at two different times. But in the NBA... The top stars every single free agency cycle are out there available. And so that period in early July into like, I guess, the entire month of July, that is probably when the NBA generates the most interest. You could probably put it up there with like a game seven of the NBA finals. And Adrian Wojnarowski has become the front man, the lead singer, basically, the man on the poster for the NBA's offseason player movement. And he's just stepping away. So I don't know. Like when you when you put it into that perspective, he is the lead figure on the most popular time annually for the National Basketball Association. And just and, just, and Shams is by the way his value just went because now Shams is like a solo because it was Shams and Woj and a bunch of other sort of the only guys that break news on that level are Shams and Woj. And so ESPN almost has to hire Shams now. This is great for Shams. Yeah, I hope Shams gets hired by an organization that pays. I hope he gets a lot of money. I've actually met him every year at the like the in Vegas when they do the media thing, like the party. He's a good dude, but I hope he gets paid a lot of money. But part of his contract is like, hey, can you just stop tweeting stupid things? Like, I don't need you to tell me what the FanDuel updates are for when a trade gets made. Like, you probably shouldn't be talking about that. You're a reporter. 
Uh, you don't like he had that one famous one where he was like kind of altering the the odds of I can't remember if it was a draft pick or something. Where he was like, they're not going to draft him. And it's like, oh, actually, they did draft him. That's kind of sketchy. But uh, yeah, it's it's wide open, right? Like Chris Haynes and Jake Fisher again, who I think is super underrated. I don't know if he ever wants to get this sloppy, but Jake Fisher like has a lot of sources. So uh, windy it's be, Brian, it's, I think Windhorse is kind of kind of is where he is windy, right now. Yeah. I think he likes it, his his role it, right now. Well, I mean, you were shocked. Like I can tell because you keep bringing it up, and I'm with you. Like I still haven't really wrapped my head around it, but. I think I was equally as shocked that uh, – did you know that these college – like, I would be happy if you're listening to step down from Flagrant Howells and become the GM of the University of North Dakota men's basketball team. I didn't know those posi- positions existed. Like, he just gets the, to, it's, it's a new thing. Yeah. That's fantastic. Sign me up. I where's Really? I feel like that would be a pain in the ass, though. You're literally dealing with, like – these kids have so much power over you now compared to maybe five years ago. Like, five years ago, you just, like – you brought in a kid on signing day, and then he stayed in your program for the most part. And if he wanted to transfer, he'd sit out a year, so then he wouldn't transfer. And now it's like if you coach him hard, potentially he could get offended and leave the program. And then, like you said, you're dealing with NIL funds, and you're raising money for your facilities, and you're raising money or at least trying to create infrastructure for players to make money. That seems really and, stressful and, and, to me. And no, you're right, because I, I – you're, that's why you're probably seeing we have now turned this into a college football podcast that's why you're probably seeing the <laughs> Sabins of the world leave at the time they yeah. do. I mean there also was like a big picture here of why are all these people leaving at the height of their powers it's like well maybe because the whole process is broken Chip Kelly too yeah but uh but like in the in the pros if you're the GM you kind of got one shot right or a couple drafts whereas like him at St. Bonaventure like that guy is a legend he's just going to be I mean also like as someone who was employed by a college once and knows the salaries and money they throw around like dude just give me a pair of fighting hawk shorts and a hoodie and i'll just walk around (laughs) and again like recruit dudes and try to give them big big deals uh with cars so it was it was a fascinating thing it does sound like everyone at like the top of espn was just startled it was literally just a tweet no words just a graphic um but he'll be missed i mean and he was like he inspired me or influenced me and just wanting to do this stuff and talk about it and a lot of times imagine sending a tweet phil and you send some good ones that you know as soon as you send it, six, seven, eight million people, their phones are gonna ring. Like that's I would be frightened about like grammar errors. Like that would be a crazy stressful thing. So shout yeah. out to Woj. He'll probably make Woj. the Hall of Fame. Like, yeah, I, I mean, ever, put him yeah. in whatever Hall of Fame you can. Does he do, do we put reporters in the James Naismith basketball hall of fame? I mean, he's gotta have a wing in there somewhere. But he let one more thing on him. We literally call basketball breaking news a Woj, Woj yeah. bomb. Mm-hmm. Are we going to keep calling breaking news a Woj bomb, even if other people deliver it, or is it only exclusive? It's like That's like people say honor. Kleenex. Like I didn't want a Kleenex, <laughs> but you really you really want a tissue from Puffs potentially. But Kleenex owns that market. That that let's put that on the agenda for next summer. But we should talk about all the things that like aren't a brand name, but you just think of them as. And Kleenex might be the number one one. Kleenex and and NBA breaking news, I guess, are the two in that category. So, uh, well, let's uh, let's get to a random wolf of the week here, presented by KW Outdoor Solutions. Does the thought of hanging your outdoor holiday lights give you heartburn? Give you anxiety? It does for me, actually. I feel like I'm <laughs> always going to screw something up. Uh, that's where KW Outdoor Solutions comes in. They are your one stop shop for holiday outdoor lighting. And by holidays, I'm telling you, the Mackies have some Halloween lights up right now. We're very festive. So KW Outdoor Solutions offers design, installation, maintenance, takedown, and storage, roof lines, trees, shrubs. They will do everything for you. Choose from a variety of colors and patterns, maybe a classic single-colored look or full Clark Griswold, whatever you're looking for, kwoutdoorsolutions.com. Locally owned and operated, serving the Twin Cities Metro, KW Outdoor Solutions. Dot com. Let's bring him in here. Producer extraordinaire, Ross Brendel. Fresh haircut. Look at that, dude. Look at that, my guy. You left the beard, though, right? Yeah, for now. I'm still working on some, uh, you know, facial issues that typically hit, like, 18-year-olds. Here I am, 38, still suffering from them. So I'm <laughs> looking good. Is that I'm a covering so them Ross up? is using a beard to cover up acne right now is yes. what's happening. But and I just found a, a few more. So clearly something has happened in the last couple <laughs> weeks in my life that has either 
made me more stressed or I'm eating something <laughs> terribly that is causing this issue. So uh, there we I go. Welcome great, inside dude. my life, flagrant howls. I think listeners. I think we should we should keep this going until I don't know. Like, what is it? Is it like you have to grow it until at least the wolves lose their first game or something? I'll, I'll tell you what. I'm Ooh, thinking uh, about getting rid of it literally any day now. Okay. But I don't know. You put but, so much work into it. If the Gophers beat Iowa, I'll keep it for another two weeks. Okay. How about Bad. that? Okay. <laughs> okay. I didn't know you had that so hot on the button on the trigger over there. Oh, I, I've always got the rouser just ready to rock and roll here. Dude. By the way, gentlemen, I don't use a crock pot. I legitimately use a slow cooker. That's another one that people like to uh, confuse. Oh, cause, yeah, because crock pot is the brand. Yeah. Correct. Yes. The slow cooker. I call also, them crock pots. Yeah. Also, tune in next week for Ross Brendel's 38-year-old acne update right here on Flagrant Howls. I've done a really good job of uh, <laughs> if we're all going to share our personal stories. I've done, I won't even get into this because I've tangent on it before, but I will just ask again because I do actually, Phil knows this, I love the people that listen to this podcast and support it. If anyone understands how credit scores work, Please let me know oh in the God. comment section because I am running into situations again as I try to get a new car. Um, I don't understand it. I will leave it at that. Well, the crazy it's... part, Kyle, is when you actually unload some credit, your credit score is going to go down. Yeah. Yeah. Ross, <laughs> crazy is not the word I would use, but I'm trying to not get fired. So. Upside down is what that is. <laughs> Maybe Kyle can just pay cash for that car and not have to worry about Apparently the cash is like apparently people would rather I have nine credit cards and no money. And well, like, that's what like, helps you build good credit score is like having lines of credit and then paying off in a timely manner. But, but, but like the times that they pull random credit scores, it's like if you were like, hey, we're going to weigh you on Friday after Thanksgiving. It's like, well, that's a terrible time to weigh yeah. myself. Like I ate four turkeys. Like, why don't you wait a week? It's like, no, we had to pull it today. It's like, absolutely go. Anyway, flagrant house. Can, can we get like a rolling average around here for these credit scores? I mean, come on. Joining mm. us next week on flagrant Howells, <laughs> Dave Ramsey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, okay. It's time for the random wolf of the week. Uh, Kyle has 20 career victories. I have 10. So I'm looking to close the gap here. Uh, the last handful of random wolves, Latrell Sprewell, Jordan McLaughlin, Tony Campbell, Kevin Martin, and Jeff Teague. So Ross is going to throw out a series of clues. We're each going to get a heat check guess, which doesn't count toward our total. And then after that, three incorrect guesses. If one of us hits a third strike, the other one wins automatically. No Googling. You may control F search the list of former random wolves to make sure we didn't already do someone you're about to guess. Here we go. I'll say this. When the algorithm pulled this name out for me, it did bring a smile to my face. So for whatever that's worth, whatever that means to you guys, this brought back mildly happy Is that the memories. first clue? It Wesley, can jo be. Wesley Johnson. <laughs> Is that your heat check? He had a great smile. It's not Wesley Johnson. Okay. I won't even count that. I'll, I'll give you an no, actual that would, clue. No, that was a good clue. Okay. This so random, Kyle's gonna get, you get an actual heat check. Yeah. You get an actual heat check when I give you the first clue. And we're going to go with one that I don't believe is super helpful, which makes the heat check that much more fun. This random wolf of the week averaged 9.6 points per game in his NBA career. 9.6 points per game. It's pretty good, man. That's pretty. It is pretty Solid. good. Okay. I think I know it. No, he, I don't know. He didn't average 9.6, did he? Do we already do? Can I do a control F? Yeah. Control F. Yeah. Control F, yeah. You said you can. I also on, love on that I gave check, though. It's a little, it's a little, I love that I gave one simple clue and you're like, I think I know it. Okay. I think this guy might have scored more than 9.6, but I'm going to go Terry Porter. Oh, that's good. Good. good great game. heat check. Not correct. <laughs> one of these days we're going to get it just by odds right we're gonna have a hundred yeah. wolves and there's gonna <laughs> be gonna less be to glorious. choose from yeah. <laughs> ricky rubio right. oh, oh dude he does bring back happy memories okay that's why i said it not him yeah was that a guess that yeah, was yeah, a guess yeah, yeah okay yeah. Well, whatever it's wrong right. it's wrong right Sorry. is it wrong <laughs> it's wrong yeah it's wrong okay okay this random wolf of the week played college basketball in the big east the big east I think I know it. <laughs> okay. 
Kyle, this random wolf of the week, not a first round pick. Yeah. Oh. Brother, this random this. wolf of the week played in parts of three decades. Wow. Yeah, but this, this is all random. Rossinisms, where he's like not a first round pick, but he could have been undrafted, Phil. Also, could've he could have been, been like 99 pick. into like 2001. I don't know. I know how you work, Ross. I feel like you're kind of taking shots at me right now. And let me remind you, you lead 20 to 10. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Calm down over there. This random wolf of the week played in parts of three decades. Your next clue. This random wolf of the week, gentlemen, I kind of put it in the last clue. No longer in the NBA. Okay. Go. So no longer in the NBA. Go, Phil. Okay. <laughs> what a challenge, my well, Neither one of us has a oh. has a has a strike. No, I, have a real, right? I have a real guess. A real guess. I'm a, I, no, I, have, too. I, I have a strike. I'm taking a strike because Wesley Johnson was a good guess in my heat check. But this will be Go my ahead. second if you, guess. If you can nail it here, it's yours. Go ahead. Greg Monroe. It is not Greg Monroe. Ooh, Don't confuse guess. Greg Monroe with former Minnesota Twins great Craig Monroe. By the way couple of great Monroes right there. We should do a Monroe power ranking. <laughs> you, you, Louisiana Monroe. Maryland, Maryland number one. Maryland Monroe. You care to weigh in here, Phil, or you want to you hear another clue here? Big East, man. This um, random. The one I was thinking of is SEC, so. Okay. This random Wolf of the Week scored 6,477 career points in the National Basketball Association. Also, before the shirtless guy in the comment section tells me, yes, I remember Greg Monroe was drafted in the first round. We get it, okay? It was, this is hard. I'm trying to beat Phil. Greg Monroe was a good guess. Okay, I'm going to throw one out. I'm going to throw one out. Troy Hudson. Oh, are you feeling the stress of both worlds, Phil? <laughs> shush, shush, you. Shush, shush, shut him down, Ross. You are not correct. Oh, damn it. Troy Hudson, that's a you guys are very angsty today, too. Like, you, you typically wait as long as you can before throwing out names. You're just all over the place today. I like it. How many times have I just burned out three get? I think at least three <laughs> times I've just <laughs> aggressively given Kyle. I mean, he was going to get the point anyways, probably. But <laughs> one was the fateful. Um, I'm blanking on the term. What is the uh, what is that thing called in syllables? One was the fateful yeah, syllables day tough. where you did that. <laughs> this random wolf of the week, boys. Played in just one NBA playoffs. Wow. Okay. That's pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, then he played for at I mean, least a decade. Like, that's yeah, wild, keep, right? Keep in mind, he played for the Timberwolves. So it's yeah. entirely possible <laughs> to miss the playoffs with the Timberwolves. <laughs> uh, per basketball reference, gentlemen, this random wolf of the week earned nearly $21 million during his playing career. So how about that? Might want to do some math and some working in your head. Furthermore, gentlemen, this random wolf of the week only played for two NBA franchises. Two bad NBA oh, teams. That's oh, man. Okay. On December 19th of 1992. This random Wolf of the Week scored a career-high 39 points in an overtime loss that I'm sure we all remember to the Golden State Warriors. I would have been six, by the way. I'm just going to throw that out. <laughs> I, I was four, so I don't know if I I don't remember it very much. Wow. Let's see. This is where I need I need to clean up some of these right here. These yeah, like, I only have ones. I'm not just going to give you the free one. I would hate yeah. that. Yeah. So. Yeah, old man Macadac. Wait, you have no you have one, two guesses. Yeah, one and a half. But I I don't have a clue on this one. And now that we get older, anything before two thousand I'm screwed. So this random wolf of the week, currently an NBA assistant coach. Scott Brooks. I like where your head's at there. That's your second guess, and it's incorrect. Duh. Oh, that was good. <laughs> that was Wow. I think officially Kyle it's has not two Scott left Brooks, and you huh? have one left. No, nope, it's no. not Scott Brooks. Where did he play college? I'm looking that up now. I think UC Irvine. He's a West Coast guy. Okay. Or Texas Christian University. TCU. 
I think this one's going to be very helpful, but I'm not positive. These next three or four are going to be very helpful. Somebody's going to get this. This random wolf of the week once appeared, once appeared rather in an NBA slam dunk contest. So I have, I have only one guess, right? You only have one guess left. Kyle's got two. He says one and a half, but he's got two. All right. Chris Carr. Phil, I really like you going for it today. <laughs> oh, no. no. No, but I that's not correct. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to keep going for fun. Yeah. Kyle I, gets the point. I want to guess this. Chris Carr. How about this one, Phil? This random wolf of the week played for a now defunct NBA franchise. Meaning that franchise no longer exists. Helpful at all? Can I take another heat check? Guess? Yeah, no, you, yeah. <laughs> go, go, get this. Go. Kyle's no, already okay. technically won, so we're just playing yeah, it no, out Kyle, for fun. Kyle, I over, might not ever get this. This random wolf of the week was the last remaining original Minnesota Timberwolf. Doug West was he original? Good job, Phil. That's He's it. Right? It's a moral victory for you, Phil Mackey. Uh, you know what? So I will say this: Doug West. I was going to guess Doug West, but then I thought there's no way Doug West only played in the playoffs once because because I thought he played further into the 90s, but he was only a part of that first playoff team, huh? Yep. And then traded to the oh. to the Vancouver Grizzle. I, oh. I was going to say, I didn't <laughs> Vancouver. I was thinking the Sonics when you said defunct, but yeah, that's and he was in a dunk contest. Did not allegedly know that. Did allegedly not know that about Doug West. Yeah, Doug I actually West. did not know that either, but I'm trusting the interweb on that one. You can Doug look West, it up if you want to. Two nicknames, according to Basketball Reference, were Fresh and X. X West. Yeah, okay. for old Fresh West. Phil Amazing. Or Kyle? Well, congrats to Kyle. Yeah, would, you have, <laughs> would you have got it if I told you that this player would forever be linked to Anthony Peeler? I would not have gotten that. I would they not were, have. They were traded for each other. Okay. And when attempting to guess this random wolf of the week, boys, don't look east. Perhaps you should look. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I probably would have right, got buddy. that one there. All right, there trim it those, is. Trim that facial hair. Yeah. See you, kids. Maybe oh, on Sunday. Man. It all depends on. Fire up the music, Phil. It all depends on the gophers. <laughs> this has been Flagrant Howls, your favorite Timberwolves lifestyle podcast.